Hi, everyone. We have a very special guest for today. His name is Dr. Raman Sharma. He's a cancer rehab specialist, and he did his residency at Burke Rehabilitation Hospital, and he went to do fellowship at Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York. And he's here today to give us amazing advice to the incoming interns this year. So let's welcome Dr. Sharma. Hi, Dr. Sharma. Hi, how are you? Good. So good to have you here. The first question we have for you today is what is your general advice to all the incoming interns that are starting um, residency this year? So uh, first of all, congratulations. I know this has been a long road to get here. So take a moment to appreciate that. Appreciate your journey, all the work that led you to this point. Uh, Be humble, sit down, keep working, keep moving forward. Uh, you chose this path of being a lifetime, uh, lifelong learner uh, for the benefit of your patients and for yourself. And keep in mind, the this 2024 match was one of the most competitive matches ever. Over 50,000 applicants and um, the IMG match rate, I believe, was somewhere around 60% or so. So there's thousands of people, literally thousands, who would give anything to be in your position. So please remember how fortunate you are to have this opportunity to make the most of it each and every day. Mm -hmm. Wow, yes. Thank you for such a great reminder. I think a lot of people may be busy right now completing all all their paperwork, but it's a good reminder to be grateful for where we are right now. Of course. Um, Yeah. So the second question I have for you is, so what is the three things that interns must do and three things interns must never do during residency in their first year? Yeah, so I'm glad you asked. Um, for what you must do, number one, ask questions. This is the time for it. Like nobody expects you to know everything, or for that matter, nobody expects you to know anything. This is the time to ask, ask, ask. This is the time to say, I don't know, and no one's going to think less of you. And please ask for help. Uh, you know, sometimes you'll find yourself performing the roles of not just the resident, but also the phlebotomist and the transporter and the social worker, radiology tech. Um, and everybody in your class is in the same boat. They're all struggling to adjust to this new lifestyle. So it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to ask your seniors, your attendings, you know, mm-hmm. they all want you to succeed. Number two, be professional at all times. From the moment you enter your enter the hospital till you're back at your home, you're, you're somebody's doctor now. There's a great deal of responsibility here. Patients or families might be sharing the same lobby or elevator with you or the train with you. You never know. So you need to be the example of professionalism, somebody that you would trust if your relatives were seeing a physician. You know, you want to know they're in good hands. And be professional with all your peers, all of your colleagues, your nurses, therapists, case managers. Uh, We're all here with the same goal in mind. Number three, sleep. (laughs) <laughs> please <laughs> like <laughs> and rest get your rest when you're off because i i felt chronically sleep deprived and i'm sure like definitely use the time off to disconnect from work focus things away from medicine mm-hmm. to have that good work life balance this could mean the gym or cooking or time with friends and family even if you're just sitting in front of the tv some nights mm-hmm. don't feel guilty be kind to yourself allow yourself some grace Mm -hmm. Allow yourself to decompress. This is a tough job mentally and physically. So keep that in mind. Things not to do. Okay. (laughs) Never lie. This is a matter of patient safety. Um, Never make anything up. If you didn't get to do something on the list or get a chance to check a labs, don't assume it was normal. Don't try to hide that you couldn't get something done. It's much better to be honest so your seniors can help you. That's their role. After all, their role is to help you get better so you can work towards being independent. And once they trust you can do that, it makes their life easier. So believe me, there's a lot of people invested in you getting better and better. Number two, never be late. I know it's not easy. Uh, Again, this goes with being tired and all the time and sleep deprived. It was a struggle for me personally, too. Mm -hmm. I had to buy an extra loud alarm clock. And if you can, not only don't be late, be early. My most prepared colleagues were the ones who got in early, ran over their list, looked at labs and notes from overnight. This will make your day run so much smoother. It's so important to, at the very least, be present at everything, at all the lectures, at all the rounds. You need to be there. Three, don't get down. Don't get negative. Don't let anyone's negative mood affect you or affect your work. You have a purpose here in residency. 
And that purpose is to get better and learn each day. It's easy to sometimes think, hey, all I did was scout work today. I didn't even learn anything academically. It's okay. There's going to be days like that. But even then, you can learn something. You can learn how to be more efficient based on what happened today. And you may run into a tough attending sometimes who's grumpy. Not everyone's going to be your friend. Still learn from it, get your work done, and make a mental note for yourself. Plan to be different type of attending when you're in that role in the future. Mm -hmm. Volunteer to mentor future residents, medical students, host workshops to develop suturing skills, ultrasound, imaging, joint injections, things like that. Yeah. Mm, wow. These are really valuable advices for us. So I guess to summarize, ask questions, yeah. be professional. And then the third thing was... Rest, work-life balance, rest and sleep. Yeah. yeah. And three things not to do, never mm. lie, never be late, and don't be negative. <laughs> <laughs> or don't yes, let the negativity sir. affect you sure so thank you so much for that valuable advice hopefully we can keep it um as much as possible um yeah. follow it mm -hmm. and um the third question we have for you is how much of an influence did um, dr conrad fisher give while you were either a medical student or a resident and how helpful medquest was in terms of your reviews so it, it's been very helpful. And, you know, I had the opportunity to learn from Dr. Fisher, even as a medical student, and the rest of the MedQuest staff, um, Dr. Paul, Dr. Paris, even well before residency started at their review classes, uh, when I was preparing for, you know, step one, step two, step three. And uh, I don't think Dr. Fisher truly realizes how much <laughs> I appreciate him believing in me, teaching me, and encouraging me to this day. He's He's changed my life. He's been one of my biggest fans when he introduces me at the annual workshop that I do at Brookdale for preliminary residents. As a preliminary medicine resident myself, I know what that uncertainty feels like, and I wanted to come back and share advice on how to find PGY2 positions. So before I went to Burke Rehab Hospital, I did the first year of preliminary medicine here at Brookdale. And here's something he told me when I first started as an intern. He told me to write a letter to my future self uh -huh. about how hopeful I feel and how I felt on match day and open it up when I'm feeling especially down during residency. Mm -hmm. I kept that letter posted in my hospital locker wow. all year. So I see it at the end of every day mm -hmm. and um, it really helped keep me grounded. Mm. And, uh, and, you know, in addition to that, there are so many other mentors that I, I'm sure everyone has had that helped you get here stay in touch with them. I'm so fortunate that I've had so many good mentors to this day supported me that I can still reach out to for advice, whether now it's not so much medical advice, but life advice. And everyone has experience to help you and they want to help you. Mm, yeah. Thank you so much for the valuable advice. And yeah, that's a great story. I think it's such an amazing thing to uh, look back to, I guess, on your uh, days when you're down, um, the match day. Um, feeling and emotions and the gratefulness you have during that time. So I think it's a great reminder to write the letter to ourselves um, <laughs> during that day. So thank you so much for your time today, Dr. Sharma. And for all the interns who are watching, I wish you all the best this year. And I hope we can uh, remember Dr. Sharma's uh, words of advice, uh, of words of wisdom, and um, be amazing interns and ask questions and be early and do everything we can. Thank you. You're very welcome. All the best. Good luck, guys. Mm -hmm.